April 12 is celebrated throughout the former Soviet Union as Cosmonautics Day. On this day, the first successful flight into space took place. Six years later, the Soviet Union planned to repeat and surpass this historic triumph. It was a special year for the USSR, the 50th anniversary of the Great October Revolution, as well as the 10th anniversary of the launch of the world's first artificial satellite. How did the planned spectacular rendezvous of two Soviet spacecraft in space turn into the worst disaster in the history of astronautics? You're on Visionary Channel and this will be a very interesting video in which you'll learn why the USSR hid the reasons for the biggest disaster in space and why Gagarin hated Brezhnev. Don't be lazy, please like this video. It will be the best motivation for me. So, let's get started. The Triumph Years After Yuri Gagarin's historic flight on the Vostok spaceship and his triumphant return, there was no limit to the pride of the Soviet country. From that day, April 12, 1961, Gagarin's name became synonymous with incredible heroism and courage. All the newspapers were flooded with praises of the first man to fly into space. At that time, few knew what Yuri Alexievich actually had to go through. After his historic flight into space, Yuri Gagarin became a hero. All official sources emphasized the perfect technical condition of the spaceship Vostok and all its systems. There was a persistent feeling that all that was required from the pilot was good health and a good deal of courage to endure the flight. As it turned out later, that was not the case. There were very serious problems in the process. After an unscheduled landing in Saratov region, Gagarin was immediately taken to the regional committee mansion in Kuibyshev. There he gave a detailed report on the flight. These documents were stored for three decades classified as top secret. Only relatively recently it became known what serious risks the famous pilot cosmonaut had to face. The Soviet Union was planning a worthy continuation. By early 1967, the Soviet Union had completed the development of a new Soyuz spacecraft. It was planned to use one of the most trained cosmonauts, Vladimir Komarov, in the tests of this spacecraft. The mission plan was to first take off the Soyuz 1 with a cosmonaut on board. Then it was planned to launch Soyuz 2 with three crew members. Vladimir Komarov The mission involved docking the two spacecraft in space. The pilot from the first spacecraft would move to the second. The pilot of the first spacecraft moved to the second one. The Soyuz spacecraft did not yet have an airtight docking tunnel. The cosmonaut had to go into open space to join the Soyuz 2 crew. The brilliant overambitious idea was to exalt the Soviet country and its fantastic achievements in the field of astronautics. The perfect astronaut. An impeccable candidate was chosen for this mission. Vladimir Komarov carried the high title of hero of the Soviet Union. He earned it for his first spaceflight in October 1964. He was the most celebrated and respected in the USSR after Yuri Gagarin. Besides, the pilots were lifelong friends. They went hunting together, met with their families and even drank together from time to time. Vladimir Komarov and Yuri Gagarin were close friends. On an important Soyuz mission, Gagarin was supposed to be an understudy for Komarov. At the appointed time, they went together to the Baikonur test site. On the eve of the launch, there was a solemn rally attended by high state officials and all the pilots. Vladimir Komarov made a speech at the event. He was absolutely calm and confident. Komarov made a speech at the rally. Problems Leonid Brezhnev wanted the historic event to take place just in time for May 1. Party officials put enormous pressure on the Soyuz development team. They were required to be fully prepared for the specified date. Engineers reported that the spacecraft was not ready for such a flight. The reports indicated more than 200 structural problems. But who could take the liberty of reporting such things to Brezhnev himself? Everyone understood that this was an important propaganda event that could not be disrupted. More time was needed to correct all the existing defects. But the engineers were not given it. The CPSU had ordered the launch and it had to take place at any cost. 
All the engineers' reports were ignored, and even the fact that the four preliminary tests revealed malfunctions. Yuri Gagarin communicated closely with the engineers who worked on Soyuz. He trusted their professional opinion and even personally prepared a detailed report on all the malfunctions. Gagarin gave this report to a KGB officer, a friend of his, Vinium and Rusev. He decided to pass the document through Georgi Tsinov, a close comrade of the general secretary. Only the latter was so afraid of spoiling his relationship with Brezhnev that he destroyed the report. Rusev and all those who had anything to do with the document were either fired or demoted. When Komarov met with the former KGB officer, he said, this is my last flight and I know it. When Rusev asked why he would not refuse, Komarov replied that it was impossible. After all, if he did not fly, they would send Yuri, and he could not send his best friend to his certain death. Scary Day On the appointed day, the cosmonaut arrived at the site. All around were engineers, officials, and journalists. After a short speech, handshakes and hugs, Vladimir Komarev entered the elevator cabin and began to ascend to the upper platform. When he came out on it, he raised his hands above his head, clasped in greeting. Loud applause erupted below. It was the last time the pilot was seen alive. Shortly before liftoff, Gagarin appeared at the spaceport and demanded to be put into a spacesuit. He was furious and declared that he had to fly. All present felt this was a sudden whim of the starry-eyed Yuri Alexeyevich. Only much later, after all the details of the story became known, did many understand what was really going on. Gagarin was desperate. He really wanted to save his friend. But he couldn't. The ship that crashed into the Earth. The remains of a spaceship. It was officially announced that the test flight had gone completely according to plan. All the declared tasks have been completed. The report indicated that the cosmonaut pilot died as a result of a failure of the main parachute. It was not reported that the slings got tangled in orbit because of an emergency rotation and the fall occurred without a decrease in speed. The reserve parachute failed to open. A similar situation was almost exactly repeated in January 1969. Cosmonaut Boris Volanov was flying on Soyuz 5. Only the latter managed to survive. Vladimir was not so lucky. Vladimir Komarev with his wife and daughter. Accident? Was the death of cosmonaut Vladimir Komarev a tragic accident, as all the official reports said? Definitely not. Tests of unmanned Soyuz were conducted before that. All of them failed. After these unsuccessful attempts, a decision is made to implement such an ambitious project. What for? To gratify someone's vanity? The astronaut paid a heavy price for it. The worst thing was that he knew perfectly well that he would not come back alive. The hero's daughter, Irina Komarova, recalls that he was aware of the truth. Eyewitnesses of the event said that before the flight, Komarev said, all unmanned Soyuz are safely ruined. The machine is crude, but it's me who has to fly. Last words. The US National Security Agency had some kind of facility at an Air Force base near Istanbul. There they were able to listen to all conversations between Komarab and ground control. According to a former NSA analyst named Perry Felowak, the cosmonaut was contacted in the last minutes by Alexei Kasigin, chairman of the USSR Council of Ministers. During the conversation, he even cried. Kasigin told Komarab that he was a hero. The pilot was also allowed to talk to his wife. He talked about his love for her and his daughter. He said goodbye. It was awful. After that, communication was soon lost and the ship began to collapse and fall. The capsule was flattened. After the fall, it burned up completely. All that was left of the hero pilot was a shapeless lump of ash. All that was left of the cosmonaut was ash. An obituary from Komarov's comrades was published in the Soviet newspaper Pravda. It said that being first is always difficult. They have to walk uncharted paths dangerous surprises always lie in wait on this thorny path. Only the strongest stay the course, defying the universe.
As long as their heart beats in their chests, they will not give up. Vladimir Komarov was one of them. Slap to Brezhnev. The death of a friend deeply wounded Yuri Gagarin. He was not only upset by his death. The cosmonaut was tormented by guilt that there was nothing he could do to prevent it. The tragic event hardened and angered the pilot. In the heat of anger, he threw the following words, I will find a way to meet with Brezhnev. And if he knew about this situation, how could he let it happen? According to rumors, the meeting did take place. Yuri Alexeyevich splashed alcohol in the Secretary General's face. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.